This is the Fads podcast. So shut up and listen. He's all in there. He knows like five songs. Right? I heard he's him playing like, earlier. He's yeah. pretty good. Not bad. <laughs> he's he's in uh, band class right now, so he's learning how to play the not the trumpet, but the one that you go like this. The flute. The flute. A flute. Yeah. Okay, big right. difference there. Right. Big difference. F- my flute. Your kid is your flute. <laughs> yeah, oh, do you blow him? <laughs> You're blowing. <laughs> no, no, no. But he is a flute, is what I meant. To okay, say. which means what? <laughs> That's up to him to find out. Okay, okay. And for me to learn later on in life. Okay, you know? that's truthful, I guess. <laughs> that sounds very truthful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, that'd be cool. Okay, yeah, so you need the intro music. Yeah. I want to get the copyrights or some copyrights to some music. Right. I don't know, like, specifically off the top of my head, I always listen to Matthew Good. Right, and who's right. that? What, what kind that, of genre he, is he? He's more of a... He used to be, like, a rock alternative. Now he's, like, more of a folk singer. Okay. And he's more, like... I would say he's more now, more like Johnny Cash. Okay. Right? But it's a lot more, instead of lyrics, it's a lot of instrumental stuff. Right. And there's also a lot of lyrics, but it's he's very abstract with his... Um, with his vocals i guess his lyrics right okay lyrics, okay right so when you listen to him he's like what the fuck is this guy talking about <laughs> like, what, what's he singing but, right uh, but then but then it's the music that you can yeah. listen to right yeah. is that what you're like saying i was listening to him right. all day today like, okay okay that's okay. the shit that i was listening to. gotcha right? oh you know what i heard that actually i heard yeah. some music playing yeah yeah, yeah. What's and, that? Uh, I, I don't what story know. you can tell today um i might have two okay um but we'll start with you Oh, what? Okay, yeah, we'll start with you. Uh, okay. I already started with uh, the last person. Though, okay, so. okay, gotcha. Um, but you you were talking about... Um, um, uh, you were scammed. I got scammed, you yeah. Scammed. I was telling you I got scammed. Yeah, so I don't really have a... I, like, the $800 one was my scamming story. Right. But I, I don't know if I can extend this story... But you go ahead and tell yours, and I'll try and think about how I would extend the story that I have. Okay, yeah. If, if you need to, in your situation, maybe, just say, like, a certain someone or use terms like yeah. that that are... Uh... But I don't know how to make it longer than, like, two minutes. Well, you know, you can... Just I've heard you talk a lot, a lot before. Mm's and no, well, no, that's... <laughs> right? That's what I've been doing. <laughs> that's why you think this so long. You got so much yeah. to edit out. Yeah. No, okay. But, yeah, when I got scammed... Um, this was really funny because I had, uh, I don't know, did you know that like when Bitcoin was booming? Like, do you, like I think I might have told you like around the time where Bitcoin was like a big thing. Maybe when like I started working with you, but yeah. okay, maybe not. It was a couple years ago. Okay, maybe I, I was working. you talking about it quite a bit. Yeah, I maybe, was maybe it was before I started. Maybe it was before I started working that this happened. But anyways, yeah. actually it was. Um, Bitcoin was like booming to like a super good price. Like everyone was like buying Bitcoin. I was like, I'm going to get some, right? So I yeah. bought some. And uh, I was doing this thing that was, it was called like, um, it was called a, they were called pump groups. And basically what it was, it was like pump a, a pump, <laughs> yeah, a, a pump a group. A pump group. A pump group. That doesn't sound right. <laughs> yeah, it didn't sound right, but it was really cool. Um, what it was is like, basically it was a group of us. And they pump? Yeah, we pump. We, Wait, what do you pump? We, just... <clears throat> so it's an orgy. <clears throat> to the crypto market. Orgy to the crypto market. Basically, that's, that's basically what it was. Um, we'd all just like go to one coin and say, or or, or we'd be like, okay, at this specific time, we're all gonna buy this coin yeah. so that people who are trading are gonna see that the coin's going up. They're gonna buy it so that they can hopefully sell later on. But because we're gonna be the ones starting that boost, we all buy it for the cheap price and then we sell it for the oh, higher price. I remember you talking about this. Yeah. Yes, yeah. right. So we were pumping. I was doing like a pump a day or like a, a couple pumps a week or something. Some of them I hit like really good. Like there was, I think the biggest one I ever hit was like 750 bucks or something like that on like one pump. Like it was just like started with like, I think it was, I did like 200 or 300 bucks and then I ended up like doubling um, or tripling what I, what I put in. I got like 700 bucks profit or something like that. It was wicked. But so I'm pumping like every, every couple days and uh, I'm on the app Telegram. Have you ever heard Telegram? I know what a Telegram is, but app Telegram it sounds pretty simple. It's like yeah, it's just like a messenger. Yeah, yeah messenger yeah. app. It's big with like you cryptocurrency. Telegram, like you've got mail. 
I, I didn't know what a telegram was in like old old terms. Like I actually didn't know what you're talking about. I only know the app, so like you must be old. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> like I know what it's just a piece of mail, is it not? I, I have dude, I like, don't or, know. Or, I, I don't know. Like That's a piece the of thing. Mail with like a with a note on it. Dude, I got I, I know what email is. I know. I barely know what that fucking shit does. <laughs> I'm still having trouble with it. Uh, yeah, I don't so. know where everything is on that fucking thing. Still. On what? Your email? My email. Like, I'm still, like... You still, the, you still don't know how to work email? Email's come and already is going, man. It's all messenger now. I know. But I still have Outlook. What's out? Yeah, that, that's, I, yeah, that's, that's email. That's too? That's email. Yeah. That's email. Outlook's email. Yeah. But I have this thing on my email where every time I go on it now, I don't know if there's a virus in it, but every time I scroll down to look at my messages... The, that page goes white for two seconds and then it goes back and every time I move the mouse it goes white again and then it keeps doing that right mm. so it's hard for me to click on messages because every time I go and try to it goes white again <laughs> not the screen but just the page in the email weird yeah right so I created another email uh, for those of you who don't know I have another email called enemy tide pro Outlook.com. <laughs> That's my email. No ad. No. Oh, there, there's an ad in there. Sorry. There's an ad. There's an ant. Not an ant, an ad. You said that so smoothly. Your voice was all perfect. I was like, oh, he's hitting this email. And then you just blanked out. I heard crickets. <laughs> there was a cricket in there somewhere. Okay. Yeah, I was funny. wondering if, like, I was just trying to determine whether or not I should. Should I be saying my email on here? Hey, oh, do you want people to email you? No. Send me your fan mail. You know what? Don't email him. Send him a telegram. Yes. Send me a telegram. <laughs> and T- send me a telegram. Confirm, this address. Confirm. Yeah. There you <laughs> I go. won't be here in two weeks, but send me. We'll get here in two mm-hmm. weeks. Yeah, so I was on the app Telegram. Big in the crypto space, and uh, I get a guy who just messages me. He's like, "Hey man, how's it going?" I'm like, like go, going good. Like lo- sometimes people just message you just to connect and like ask like how's trading going, right? And uh, this guy messages me. He's like, "Hey, can you help me out?" I'm like, okay, like what do you need help with, man? He's like, "He's like I started this account, and uh, he's like he's like it's a it's a cryptocurrency casino." He's like, I started the account. He's like, I won on there. He's like, but you can only take out half a Bitcoin at a time, and I have a full Bitcoin in there. Can you help me take out the other half? I was like, okay, what like what do I have to do? He's like, you just need to create an account, and then I'll send you the bi- the Bitcoin on the account, and then you can just withdraw it, mm-hmm. and then send it to me. I was like, okay, sure, sounds like fine, right? Um, I go to do it, and in order to make an account, they want you to make a deposit. So like, because it's a casino, they're like, yeah, you can create your account, but in order to play, you need to make an, an initial deposit mm-hmm. before you can do any withdrawals or anything like that. So I like messaged him like, dude, like it cost me to like to sign this up. Like I'm not gonna like put my Bitcoin in this thing. Like, I don't know what the heck this thing is. It wasn't a lot. It was only like, I think it was only like, I don't know, like fifty bucks or something. Like it wasn't much. Like I had a decent amount of Bitcoin uh, at this time, um, and I was like, I was like, but man, I was like, I don't want to pay this. Like I was like, man, just get like send me the Bitcoin in my other wallet and I'll pay for it. He's like, I can't. I put all my Bitcoin onto this onto this casino and I just happened to win. And it was kind of sounded true, but kind of didn't. But he yeah. sounded kind of authentic, you know. Yeah. So sure enough, I was like, okay, whatever. Like I, I did it, right? So I did it. He sends me it, and I go to withdrawal, and now it says, uh, in order to increase your withdrawal limit, it needs to be, uh, you need to have deposited at least uh, like a little bit more, and it was like now like four times more. I think it was maybe like, like, two hundred or something, or three hundred. Yeah, it was like three hundred bucks or something around. Like it was, it was an okay amount, and I was like, man, like I don't know. He's like, man, he's like, he's like, I forgot they had that policy. Like, could you just do it? And I was like, uh, I was like, I, I was like, I don't really want to. He's like, I'll give you a quarter of the Bitcoin. Like, I'll, I'll give you yeah. Bitcoin when it comes out. And I was like, man, like, I was like, I don't know. So I kind of thought about and it for a second. this guy was just messaging you? Just talking to me. Yeah. Like, like I was like thinking about helping him out. Right. And he's like, I'm on the app and I, or I'm on the, like, I'm on the, uh, the, the site and I'm like, okay, I want to see if this is legit. So he, he said it was an online casino. Like, I'm going to go try to play the casino mm-hmm. games. I start playing the games. I'm like, man, it, this is legit. Like, I'm like playing like blackjack, but it's like different, like sort of like card themes and stuff like this. Yeah. Like playing blackjack. They got like a roulette thing on there. People are talking in the chat. I'm like, is this thing real, guys? They're like, this thing's so real. Have you guys withdrawn? Just withdrew right now. Just took out my Bitcoin right now. Blah 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 blah. Mm. So it's sounding really real. I'm like, okay, uh, that sounds okay. 
I go to put uh, to pay for the Bitcoin, and I'm like, <laughs> for some reason, I forget exactly why, but my uh, my Bitcoin wallet or something at the time where I had the Bitcoin, I couldn't uh, I couldn't pay for this like 300 or something bucks, right? right. So I'm like, uh, I'm like, man, hold on, I need to go to the store get a what's called a flex pin or flexi pin, and what it basically is is it's um, it's like. Like, how do you describe it? It's like you pay for it at the store and then they give you a number and then you go put that number in online. Yeah. And then and then that's when you like it, it like send you your Bitcoin. You buy Bitcoin with it. It's like digital money kind of, but it's just like currency. It's weird. I don't really understand it completely, but it's a money transfer of some sort. So I remember I went to the get the flexi pin and uh, I got the three hundred dollars. <throat> I think I got a five hundred dollar one and I uploaded it to my to my Bitcoin wallet, bought the Bitcoin. Put it into the thing. I was like, okay, like, like I did it right. Tried to take it out, and uh, there was some other error that came out, came up with like taking it out. And I was like, okay, at this point, I was like, man, like this isn't like, like I'm not doing this. And of course, he's like, talks me into doing it somehow. I don't know. I think he offered me more Bitcoin or some shit like that. <laughs> like I, at this point, I was just like, I was thinking like, okay. I had a, oh this is what it was I had a little bit left of from doing the pumps right from I, from hitting the big pump I had I had that seven hundred bucks that I hit on yeah. this big pump and I was like I have this little bit of Bitcoin sitting in my like in my head I'm thinking like I have a little bit of Bitcoin sitting in my like uh, like my trading platform like it was called uh, Cryptopia at the time I was like I have I have like that last seven hundred dollars because at this point I didn't have any more Bitcoin like that's what that's why I went yeah. to the store to get the three hundred bucks for because I had ran out of Bitcoin in my wallet put it on there. And then I was like, okay, yeah, I have the last like 700 bucks or 800 bucks, whatever it was in Bitcoin. I could just like upload it on there and then I'll get to take out a quarter of a Bitcoin. Like guys, they need me a quarter of a Bitcoin, which is at that time it was like, I think it was like five grand. Like I think, I think Bitcoin was at like 20 grand at the time. So it was like a quarter of Bitcoin was like five grand. So I was like, I'll make like, like four grand off this or, 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 or like, like, uh, like yeah, three or four grand it was. So of course I'm a dumbass and I put it in there and as soon as I put it in there, this is the funny part, as soon as I put it in there, the guy's telegram, like like his name changes to, it's like like instantly, it's like just changes to probably got scammed for your 0.05 Bitcoin and I was like, fuck, it was a scam and then I'm just like, dude, like what the heck, like mm. can you at least give me half of it back? <laughs> He's like... Man, you're a fucking dumbass. Like he's just sending me these messages. I'm like, dude, like you just scammed me. He's like, fucking right. I just scammed you. Like just saying this shit. And I was like, Jesus. oh my so you gosh. Lost that money. Yeah. So it was like, it was like, I remember it was around like twelve hundred bucks, like eleven hundred, twelve hundred yeah. bucks. I went to the store to go get a freaking card because I wanted to help this guy out. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. Man, I was freaking. All I could say was fads. Fuck a duck shit, man. <laughs> Fuck a duck shit. <laughs> What the, instead of what the fuck, it's fuck a duck shit. Yeah, yeah, like seriously, I um, uh, and that was like the first time and the only time, thank God, I've ever been scammed. I, when it happened, I just remember I thought in my head, I was just like, I can't pump tomorrow because I just used all my Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. Mm. Wow. It fucking sucked. Mm -hmm. Tell your story. Okay, so get into it. All right, I don't know how. I can I don't know how I'm gonna extend this story, but oh, um, okay. So this one, I was probably I was in kindergarten, maybe grade one. I lived here. I lived in Abbotsford. Okay. And we were always being babysat uh, by this woman who had five or six kids. At and the time, I thought that was a lot of kids. And how old were you? I was probably. Well, if I'm in kindergarten or grade one, oh, I'm like five or six or, seven, or something, or eight. six or seven, okay. Yeah. And there was five other kids there. Yeah, there was five other kids. Okay, uh, that's a house right like, there. Okay. Yeah, uh, my, me and my younger sister would always go to this house, and uh, get babysat for at least two or three hours. And on several occasions, these older kids, they were probably you know, twelve. 13, 15 years old, they they were forced to walk us home because we were too young to walk from school to the babysitter's house, right? right? And there was, I don't think there was a school bus that could take us, or and we were too close for transit. Uh, so they'd walk us home, and at that day, I was the only one they had to walk home. So they told me that if I ran across the street in the busy street, that they'd give me superpowers. 
and I'm, I'm going to get hit. So I was, uh, you know, does this I, come back to that lazy thought of like, yeah, no, I believe you. <laughs> It started, it started young. He's like, yeah, no, I believe you. I'm too yeah, lazy no, to check no. if that's safe or almost, not. <laughs> almost. Almost came Okay, to okay, that. okay. What and happened? So they kept telling me this, you know, like, and I kept And saying, there's cars coming. There was, there, it was a busy street. It was actually Clearbrook. Okay. Um, it was right near, you know where um, Chevron is on Clearbrook? Right near the... Uh, Right, the merging lane to get off to the yeah, freeway. I know what you're talking right? about. That's where it was. Just before that, across the street, where the Chevron is, there's a road that goes down. There's a bunch of houses, a little suburban area. That's where they lived. And so we had to cross the street there, but they didn't want me to cross the street properly, right? They wanted me to run across the road in traffic. And they said, if you do that, we'll give you superpowers. Right. right. And I'm thinking about it, going like, maybe. I'm going to try this out. And um, I remember taking a step off the sidewalk to go. And I got a honk. Oh. Right? And I stepped back and I was like, okay, this is wrong. I, I'm not going to do yeah. this. Yeah. So I refused to do it the whole walk home. And they're like, you have to do it. You have to do it. Right? We're, we're going to tell our mom you weren't listening to us. Right? So I get back to the house, right. their house. And she gives me shit oh. for not listening to them. And they're just manipulating the situation, saying that he wouldn't cross uh, the crosswalk. Right. Right. And me being that young, I, I kind of felt that uh, no matter what I said, like I felt like I wasn't supposed to say anything. Right. Like um, I was probably just too afraid to stick up for myself, what it was, right? And. So, you know, I'm getting in shit. I'm, I'm stuck in this room until my mom picks me up. And then I'm getting in. Uh, she tells my mom. And then my mom gives me shit. Right? And <laughs> Did I didn't tell? say anything. Never? Never. Until, like, maybe I was in my, you know, teen years. Really? Like, oh, you remember that time this happened? You know, you gave me shit for this? Well, this is what really fucking happened. <laughs> right? My mom's just like, well, you should have said something. Oh. I, was like, fuck, I was six, seven years old, man. Yeah. Like, fuck. <laughs> um, Shit. That would have been rough. Imagine had you done it, though. I know. Why would the. Imagine how those kids. Like, yeah, you know, if I went across there. You and send a kid die, and die? Like, oh my gosh. Like, uh, and then. Oh. They probably did not like me at all. No, well, clearly. I mean, they, would, they wanted to end you. <laughs> 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 Yeah, like, what the fuck, man? Yeah, like, hey, run out in front of this traffic. You'll get superpowers. No, you'll fucking die. Uh, I remember sometime after that, um, because there was, I think there was three or four boys and only two girls. Yeah, you were one of them. Yeah. (laughs) Um, Maybe they were my fucking family. Who knows? Oh, yikes. Um, But anyways, uh, in the basement, I'd always go down to the basement because their basement would just be covered in toys. G.I. Joe's, Transformers, anything. All and they'd over. all just be on the floor. And I'd, you know, pick through them all and be like, oh, you know, I wish I could have this for Christmas or this for Christmas. And this is the first time I've ever stolen something. Oh, So I was just yeah. like, it was a, I think it was a Transformer. And remember, I was five or six, maybe right. seven. This is why they asked you to go onto the road. It's possible. Yeah. Or no, I think it was... Maybe, but I keep picturing that it was after. Okay, it happened after. Fact. Okay, okay, okay. It's happened after. Um, so, yeah, you know, I take this transformer right in my pocket, and my mom picks me up. We go home. Yeah. And, uh, like, a day or two later, my mom's just like, uh, where's that transformer you took? And I was like, what transformer I took? She's like, that one that you stole. Oh. And I was just like, uh, I don't know. I don't have anything. Yeah. And then, of course, she finds it in my room on the floor, <laughs> like blatantly right there. Yeah. She picks it up, and then, of course, uh, the babysitter shows up at my at my house, and she's like, I saw you steal that. I was like, well, I didn't know what to say, so I was like, sorry. Yeah. Whatever. You yeah. guys tried to kill me. Yeah, so yeah. I steal this fucking thing. Yeah, fuck you guys. I'm taking your toy because you tried to kill me. Yeah. Dang, man, you you had a near death experience there. I've had a few actually. Yeah, tell me another one. Um, okay, I'm doing all the talking now. Crickets. 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 
Uh, the other one, what was the other I one? had a near-death experience one time. Okay, I want to hear it. Well, this one, I was, and I was super young too. Was it, this at band camp? N- no, it wasn't that one time at band camp. Oh, okay. But when I was at band camp, I was with your son playing the flute. The flute? The flute. The flute. The flute. That's what he plays, the right? Flute. Let's not go there. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, you know, was there, did you guys practice? Yeah. Okay, yeah. anyways, I, uh, yeah, this one time, uh-huh. I went to the lake. Uh, it, no, it was like a, it, it was called a creek, you know, Suicide Creek? Yes, okay. yes, yes. That's okay. all the way up past. Like Hatsik, isn't it? Uh, I don't know. It's, somewhere it's over there? It's up there in Mission somewhere. Yeah, somewhere over there. Yeah, in Mission, like around there. Um, and I was like really young. This Like this is like one of my first memories too. I was really young. I uh, I, I remember there was this like weird... It was, again, it was it was kind of similar to you. I was at like a babysitter's house. or Not at their house, but we always got babysat. Yeah. And the babysitter had taken us to Suicide Creek this time. So there was me, like my brother and my sister, and like a few other kids, right? And there was the, this like this brother and sister... That we always like kind of played with they were kind of like weird and like kind of far out there like the guy was kind of like like he was like a little crazy like like i don't know like if he actually had something or what. he was like a little, he was a young younger kid too but a little older than me yeah. he was kind of like out there like a adrenaline guy or something and like he's like yeah like come come like ride the tube down the creek with me blah 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 and i was like okay like sure like that looks fun like I, i've ridden on a tube before down the creek going like down the like going down nice and slow right yeah. but i was like sure why don't i like why don't i try it uh, so, so I go, I, I'm going down with him and I'm kind of scared. Like I'm, I'm like, man, I don't know if I want to like go down to the, to the part where it goes like, it was like creaky and it's really shallow. And then like you get to the bottom of kind of like the downhill part and then it like opens up to like a deeper part of the Creek, right? Like it's actually like, you know, deeper than me. I was only like, I don't know, I'm short now. So I was like really short then. Cause I was like, <laughs> cause I was a little kid. You were a little hobbit then. Yeah. Like a little I, bit, a little, a little tougher hobbit. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> However small I was, the water was deeper. I know that. Um, so like going and I and I remember that I like stopped the tube before we got to like the part where it was gonna be like like super like rapidy. I think that's what they call them, right? Rapids. Yeah. And uh, I was like, man, I don't know how long we're down. He's like, oh no. He's like, he's like, we're fine, we're fine. You should do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. I was like, uh. uh I was like, okay, let's, okay. And then like, so we start going down, right? And then like it funnels, like it funnels to where it's about to like out of the rapids and then onto like the flat like part of the, the creek. Yeah. And uh, so we go to that. I was like, oh, that wasn't so bad. And we get to like, we go like right across the creek to like the other side. Like it wasn't like a super wide creek. It was just like whatever. Maybe like, like, I don't know, like 10 or like 15 feet or something. Um, get to the other side of the creek. And uh, he tries to push off the, off the rocks to push us like back towards the shore the other way. And like when he pushes it, like the tube, I'm on the back. The tube just like flips upside down. And like, I didn't know how to swim. Like at this time, like I didn't know how to swim. So like, uh, I fall back and I ended up at like that point. Like I just like blacked out. Like I don't remember the last thing I remember then was just like my arm was on the tube. Like, like as we went, like as I like went backwards, like it was just like psh, a bunch of water hit my face. <laughs> Felt like my arm on the tube. And then after that, just like blacked out. The next memory that I have is just like on the, I was on the shore sitting there, like just wet, just sitting there. So it was just like really weird. And uh, like, I don't know exactly what happened from the moment I pushed off and went into the water to like when I was on the shore, yeah. but I'm like, I know for sure I didn't know how to swim. So <laughs> I, like near death experience a little bit. I just, I think about it now and I'm just like, man, how close was I to actually dying there? Like, like, I don't know, so many different things could happen in that, in that moment. Mm. And it's kind of, it kind of cringes me a little bit. There's a lot of stories I think I might have. Like, well, you, you'd think it like the age that you're at, like six, seven, eight years old, that they're near death experiences, right? But uh, the one is kind of like similar to yours is it was at a falls. Maybe it was Bridal Falls. Maybe it was I can't remember. It was a fall somewhere here right. in the, uh, Fraser Valley, and we, I was probably fuck. I was young. It's probably the same age, eight, nine, ten, whatever, and. I was with my family. My mom was dating this really heavy set dude at the time. Right. He was like curly beard, curly hair. He was a blip. Massive guy. He was a massive guy. Really nice guy from what I remember. But, right. Okay. Uh, so we, we went to the falls. And, um, you know, I was going on my little adventure. Everybody was swimming in the... Uh, um, in this area where there was like no rapids or anything like that, it was just kind of like a cool, calm, right, right, pool area. Um, so they were swimming in there, and I was jumping from rock to rock to rock. 
closer to the white water. Oh. And uh, I could see that the, the waterfall was maybe about 30 or 40 feet that way. Right. Right? So I'm jumping from rock to rock, and of course they're wet. And I'm not thinking, so I'm jumping. And I slip and fall, right? And I go. Like you went and into the water. I, I went into the water, and like I'm, the current is taking me right. to the end of the, what I think is the end of the world. Right. right <laughs> the, like my, my death. Yeah. And, but I was able to, I would probably, uh, the current took me probably about five, ten feet to another rock. Right. And then I grabbed onto it, hu- like held on, like hugged right. it. Right. And I was like screaming and crying, and and I felt like I was there for like half an hour holding on for dear life. Right. And then this guy comes walking around like just doodly doo, doodly doo, you know, just like casually, right? He just picks me up, puts me on the rock, and then walks away. And I'm just standing there on the rock facing my family, and everybody's fucking laughing at me, All like. Right. I just died. Like, did you not see that? <laughs> I just died. I almost just died. And everybody's just laughing, laughing at me like it's like maybe they planned it. <laughs> I oh. don't know. I don't think so. But. So wait, was it the actual water? Like the- yeah, it was a it was a fall play. I can't really, I couldn't tell you which one it was. No, no. I mean like you were actually close to the water. Like it was like they weren't laughing because it wasn't actually a waterfall. You were really actually close to the waterfall. Yeah, I was really actually close to the waterfall. And they were laughing at you. Like, and I, I think so. I mean, either I'm either I was really close to the waterfall or maybe the, the water wasn't that deep for me to go through the waterfall, right? Because, you know, like, you can have you can have a waterfall. Maybe the waterfall wasn't that big. Right. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it was from, a little drop. Yeah, maybe it was maybe about this wide or something like that, but, like, there wasn't enough current to actually pull me over. I don't know. But it felt like because I was moving with the water. Right? Yeah. But me being a six or seven-year-old kid, maybe I just wasn't cluing in that. I could probably stand up in the water. The guy just came and over and like popped you up. Eye, you know? <laughs> and maybe that's why they were laughing at me. But for me, that was a near-death experience. Yeah, you're traumatized. Yeah, a little bit. I remember that, you know, even today. So. <laughs> Do you have any other stories? Um, I have... Okay, I have another near-death one. It's okay. not really a near... It's like a near-retarded story. Okay, so I like that. I like, like hearing a, your stories. Yeah. I lived in Quinnell. My mom was convinced... My grandma lived in Quinnell for years and years. And my mom, for some reason, wanted to live up there. We all wanted to live up there and be close to our grandma. You know, you want to be close to your grandma, but we're not sure why. <laughs> mom, Ain't that the truth? <laughs> oh my gosh! At first, I didn't clue what you said right there, and, then, and I was like, "We all want to be close to our grandma. We don't know why." Yeah. Um. So yeah, so we move into this place, and it's a it's a decently sized place. I think my mom, the guy that my mom was dating at the time, uh, he looked like Alan Jackson. If okay. you know who Alan Jackson, I don't. Like. He's like a six foot four scrawny dude that always wears a fucking cowboy hat with a fucking blonde mustache <laughs> and he sings a song called like Rainbow Trout or some shit like that. <laughs> I don't, I, it's not Rainbow Trout but it's like <laughs> living on me on Rainbow you know that song? It's fucking country from like the 80s anyway. Yeah. He looked like this guy. Um, I guess he was from Quinnell I guess and so he had a house out there. We all went out to live out there my sister, my older sister lived out there for a little bit, didn't like it, I ended up living with her dad, with our dad. And uh, so one day I was, uh, I guess this guy knew the neighbors, they had a pool and they were rich, I guess, or they had money at least. And we'd always go over there for the pool and this young, hot girl, she was probably 12, maybe 15, couldn't tell, I was very, very young. Yeah. Um, I know she was busty. You just knew she was older and yeah. busty. <laughs> yeah. Um, is that is that what word you, is that what you, is that what you used to describe her when you were that young? Were you yeah, like, oh yeah, she's busty. She's busty. She's got big tits. <laughs> she's nice. Seven but years old. She knows what busty. Bitch. Okay. Um, I I remember not liking her because right, she was always right. kind of ne- neglectful to us kids. Um, it's probably because maybe she didn't know what the fuck she was doing and she mm-hmm. was forced to babysit, right? She was busty. Yeah, she was busty. 
Anyways, she was babysitting us, but she wasn't over at the house. Right? She was at her, her house there for God knows what. She heard me crying. Anyways, I was in the backyard. We didn't have much of a backyard. We had a backyard. We had like a, a dirt backyard that was maybe about 10, 15 feet. And then there was a cliff of rocks, right? And then, um, um, you know, there was trees above, and I wanted to get up there, right? Because I, I heard stories about, like, trails up there, so mm-hmm. I wanted to go on these trails. So I'm climbing up this little cliff, and this cliff, to me, at that age, was probably about 10, 15 feet. Right. Not very tall now, but... but when you're that small, that that's big when you're that small. Yeah, I guess, right? Mm-hmm. And... You know, I'm climbing up with my, my, my hands, climbing up through the dirt, you know, <laughs> yeah. and I see this little, you know, twig or this, um, uh, root, root, yeah, That's what sticking it was, out. It was a root. It was green though. So I think it was just like a beanstalk? piece of, gra- maybe, maybe it was a beanstalk. Bean. <laughs> it was a fucking devil of a beanstalk though. <laughs> no, but it was like a fucking wheat. It was a wheat. Right, it looked right, like a wheat. Right. I remember it being green. It right. was sticking out. So I went to grab it thinking that it would hold me. And it was already probably about 10 feet up in this thing. Oh. And there were ro- jagged rocks all the way along the bottom of this cliff. So I, I remember like fucking like, I don't know, I, I, the weed pulls out of the dirt. I go drop into the ground and I fucking smack my head right up against a piece of rock. Oh. And it was a jagged rock. Oh. And I was bleeding everywhere. My head was bleeding. My face was bleeding. My arms and legs were cut. I think I was wearing a wife beater and shorts. You know, not a muscle shirt, a wife beater. On, a when you were seven. When I was seven. <laughs> is, that what you addressed, is that what you addressed it as, too? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I always thought I looked tough wearing a wife beater shirt. You know, at seven. You know, it had Sonic the Hedgehog on it. Oh, it man. It. Okay, okay, okay. It was blue. Okay, and, okay, you know, okay. I was stereotyping I just, I just the white. I was fucking slapping things around when I wore it, right? Okay. Slapping teddy bears around. <laughs> Is that what you yeah. did yeah. for fun? Yeah. <laughs> You're my teddy bear bitch. <laughs> Pretty much. Damn. Yeah, so, you know, out of nowhere, like, I'm screaming and hollering, right? The babysitter comes to get me. And she's like, you're okay, you're okay, but I don't feel okay. Yeah. And um, she's, she, I guess she didn't know what to do, so she fucking calls 911. <laughs> oh, they come rushing? Well, I guess well, she called 911, and I guess her mom or dad were home, or a, some sort of parent was home, and looked at me and said, like, don't bother with 911 as she's on the phone. He's not that bad. Right? He's got cuts and bruises all over the place, but... He's mad no, at both. Right. Yes, right. But, of course, I mean, I mean, that's not a, a great ending to anything like this. But at the time, it felt like maybe not a near-death experience. But you know how I have my hand-eye coordination problem? Yeah. Right? Yeah, you know, I definitely ass, know that. Right? Okay. <laughs> I think that's where it came from. I think I smacked my head so hard. That you that, got some messed yeah, up. Yeah, I got some messed up fucking coordination problems. Because I, re- I don't remember having this problem until la- sometime after that. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. So you really smacked, like, you fell 10 feet and... Yeah. Like, what is your head? Like, you were a kid. Like, what did that feel like? Because when, when I was a kid, I hit my head. I always you wanted know, to, like, scratch it to make it feel better. I don't remember what it felt like. That was such a long time ago. But I remember it fucking hurt. <laughs> I, I honestly remember, like, you know when you walk uh, along, like, a, a rocky beach and you see kind of, like, these crystallized rocks, right? They're, they're, they're kind of like, they're white with like black spots on them. Yeah, kind I know what of, talking right? about, yeah. They're kind of crystalline looking, right? Yeah. And then you rub your hand on them, they're kind of rough like that. Yeah. That's what the rock felt like Ouch. against my fucking head. Ouch. Right? But it was more like, instead of sliding your hand up softly on it, it was just a quick smack like i remember there was a fucking cut right yeah they probably just didn't want to take you didn't want 911 because they didn't want any liability for you probably yeah Yeah. and of course my mom always worked evenings uh when we were that young she was a karaoke host so she had to come running back check me out oh i'm okay go back to work she and i think her fucking work was like an hour away oh yeah because it's like when you go to quenelle we think we lived outside the town 
Right. Right. So I think we must have lived like a good forty five minutes out of town. Like it was. So she's hauling back forty five minutes to come check on you. So I think, as far as I remember, those are my near-death, near-retarded experiences. If anybody's, re- you know, offended by me saying the word retarded, you know, it is a word in the dictionary. Well, th- yeah, there you go. You know. That's credible right there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, don't be offended. <laughs> Just look it up. People are too soft, man. People are yeah. too soft these days. Yeah. I think sometimes they're too, it's not that they're too soft. I think it's, it's intentional. I think they're intentionally too soft, or they intentionally get offended by Mm, shit. Conspiracy, they're intentionally soft. Yeah, because they want to feel like they want to be heard, so they're making shit up to be heard. I think that's a lot. I think that's what fucking X is doing with a lot of shit. She gets offended by everything. Every time I open up my mouth, every time I do something, (laughs) you know, seems like, you know, like, questionable like she's she's a black or white kind of person right mm-hmm. there's no middle ground like if you're wrong you're fucking wrong there's no like you know it's you know just don't do it again kind of thing right it's like, no that's inappropriate right right that kind of crap right you i know? smoked a big joint before i came here too. you know i figured i yeah. saw your eyes yeah and i was just like he smoked a fucking joint yeah but i didn't want to say it right away just in case oh no you could say it right away i'm 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 openly a weed smoker yeah, it's on. It's on audio now. You could you could exploit me. I don't think anybody's gonna give a shit anymore. 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 Well, now it's legal, so who gives a shit? Oh yeah, true that, true that, true that. Man, one thing that we didn't plan that I thought was kind of funny is that we're both wearing a collared shirt right now. Really? Like no, yeah, a, co- a collared. Uh, yeah, I know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I saw you. I was like, oh shit. I was like, I get wanted us to the collar. Up oh. Nice, like somewhat. Like, too, like, like honestly, like we're kind of matching. We're wearing jeans and then like a. a Collared shirt that's semi nice. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I think it's kind of okay, neat that, that you know, like, you know, I would like for people to show up here, you know, kind of dressing a little, little nice, especially like if when I if I do video record it. It sets the mood, man. Even like even if like you're not even recording it, it still sets the mood. I'm like yeah. I feel fresh. I feel like you're looking fresh. I'm like yeah, yeah. it sets a good tone. It's nice. Yeah. That stuff really makes a difference, especially when you're creating content like audio, video, whatever. Like the setting that you're in when you do it really affects the outcome of the of the like product or call whatever comes out of it. You know, so you like sitting here. Like I heard like people who um, who work from home, right? There was like a study. I don't know the numbers here, but the study is like uh, from people who work at home. People who get up in the morning and they dress like they're going into work or like like treating their business like a business. You know, they dress like a business owner and do their work from home though. Uh, uh, compared to people who work from home, but they choose not to get yeah. dressed for it and just like work like from their regular clothes or from yeah. like their lazy clothes, right? Yeah. That the productivity is way higher in the people who just uh, dress to play the role, even though yeah. they're in the exact same setting. Um, your productivity is still higher because your body, something with your mind, is just telling yourself you can yeah, be more productive. Yeah, I can see that. So, so when like you have the setting like this, where it's like it feels all fresh, like you know you're not in your sweatpants and a hoodie or some shit like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, it's like it sets the tone, so you're able to get it. Just the setting's different. So yeah, yeah. yeah. it's interesting, right? When I heard that, I was like, huh, that's really interesting to think about. It's actually it makes a lot of sense though, because you know, like even when you. Uh... Yeah, went blank there for a second. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's it. <laughs> that's it. Um, but no, it does. It does make sense because yeah. you, know, you get um, obviously I, you dress up you, when you go out to you know on a date or right. or you go out to an event, right? You dress up, you feel really, really nice. You yeah. Feel, minus, you know, like I don't know where I was going with that actually. I don't know either. I don't know either. Okay. I think I'm not even drunk. Uh-huh. You just, like, oh, <laughs> just lost it. I just lost it. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I think that shit's so funny. I'm just going to say it makes sense. It makes sense. <laughs> I, just, I think that shit's so funny because, man, you don't know how many times that happens to me. <laughs> like, literally, I'll be, like, mid, mid-conversation mid with people sometimes, and I'm just like, I have no fucking idea what I'm talking about right now. And yeah. I just spend, like, a minute trying to bring <laughs> it back. <laughs> there are times, though, like, when I... When I I'll, when I'll talk like that, I'll, like, I'll start... <coughs> Like, I'll think of, like, I'll be speaking halfway through, but I'll keep talking. And I'm thinking in my head, what am I talking about? What am I talking yeah, about? Yeah, yeah. But I'm still talking. <laughs> right? And, and then you, 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 people are just like, huh? Like, what are you saying right now? Like, 
you started to make sense and now you're mumbling something. You're just like, no, uh, stop. Like, I can't, I don't know what I was saying. Just leave it alone. Like, I can imagine when I talk to him sometimes, you know, he stands there and listens to me. It's just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you can tell he doesn't know what word. Like, you know, he has no fucking idea what you're talking about. Yeah, you know, he's just like, I think he knows me enough now to get the gist of it. Yeah, that shit's but funny. But he's just like, okay, I'll get you. Yeah. Go back to work. Have you ever had it where, like, you say something and he responds like, yeah, and you're like, I asked you something. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, like, he says, like, yeah, or, like, someone, like, that happens yeah. sometimes or, like, you, like, someone won't hear you, so they'll just, like, generically say, like, yeah. Yeah, and then it's like all the time. Then you're like, uh, <laughs> like, I'm actually waiting for an answer. Like, I asked you a question or something, and all you answered is, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've done that quite a few times. Uh, it was really bad. That really when, cracked uh, me up. When he used to work with me, yeah, he used to talk to me, or he. I couldn't tell if he was talking to me or if he was just talking. <laughs> right, because um, I'd be like, "What? What'd you say?" And he'd just be like, "Oh," and he'd be repeating himself. And I was like, "Well, was that directed to me?" No, I'm just talking to myself. Okay. Well, can you talk to yourself in your head so I don't think you're asking questions? <laughs> it would be like that the whole time. And then he would be talking to me and be like, yep, yep. <laughs> He's just looking at me and smile. <laughs> I'll be like, okay, well, you were actually talking to me this time. <laughs> so I'd take off my earphones and then I was like, so what'd you say? He's just like, don't worry about it, man. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious.